वेलकम एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी वेल नोन नेम रिएक्शन इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री विच इज विटिक ऑलिफिनेशन सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेल नोन रिएक्शन विच इज यूज फॉर द सिंथिस ऑफ ऑलिफिन्स बाई टेकिंग एडवांटेज ऑफ रिएक्शन ऑफ इलाइड्स विद एल्डिहाइड्स और कीटोन एंड इफ वी आर यूजिंग एन अनस्टेबलाइज इलाइट देन वी एंड अप गेटिंग इज दिस जेड alkenes okay so this is what we are going to look at in the videos in much more detail and then how a sclosure modification where we use a strong base like phenyl lithium can reverse the selectivity to give us the e olefin similarly the introduction of an electron withdrawing group next to this negatively charged species can make the elite stabilize as a result of which what we end up getting is e olefins and then HWE olefination where we are going to use phosphonate esters and then still and ginary and endo olefination which exclusively provide access to the zell or olefin so all this is what we are going to see along with the relevant examples so that our concept of vitig olefination becomes much more clearer okay so i am sure most of you have already aware what this particular reaction is all about okay so as i said this involves a reaction of an allyl with an aldehyde or a ketone so what is actually a mechanism of this particular reaction so let's look at the reaction of possible mechanism okay so the general accepted mechanism of this reaction involves an attack of this allyl on to the aldehyde okay so what we end up getting what we end up getting is this betaine type species this is called betaine and this ends up giving us this oxophosphidane species and the formation of triphenyl phosphine oxide pph3 end up ends up giving us this cis olefin now what is the driving force for this reaction is the formation of this phosphorus oxygen double bond which almost has a strength of 140 to 140 kilocalorie per mole so this is the driving force for this particular reaction so this is number one thing that you should know the second thing that you should know that both these oxygen and phosphine they are in the same plane so this elimination is syn periplanar so this is second thing that you should be aware of syn periplanar okay periplanar means the elimination is taking place from the from the same side as a result of which what we are under getting is the cis olefin now let's try to look at what exactly is happening so here i have written it in a pretty straight forward manner just like let's try to look at it in a more expanded form and see what sort of a configuration that it is going through okay so if we have this phenyl then we have this phosphine this phenyl and here this phenyl okay and then next to it we have is this r group and then hydrogen now this is the elite that we have let's just try and uh, uh, write it like a dotted structure now we have here this is an aldehyde okay so this is the formation of the new bond there are two possibility though this r group could have been on this side but had it been here there would have been a repulsion between the phenyl group and the r group so the aldehydic r group much more it prefers to stay on this particular side now there are two ways this r this particular r group could have oriented had this r group been here there would have been a repulsion between these two particular these two uh, bulkier group so the r prefers to stay away from this group so this is the more preferred conformation so what happens the reaction so this is kind of a puckered transition state puckered transition state through which the reaction proceeds so this is what it forms this is p 
PPH3, this R, hydrogen, and here we have this, this oxy, sorry, this oxygen, and then we have this R, and this, what we have written is betaine is exactly what we have here, okay, where both the R group are on the same side, they are on the same side, this results in the formation of this oxaphosphatine, oxa phosphatine and which decomposes to give us the olefin. Now, initially what was believed that it is the betaine that is formed in the reaction, but now the P13 studies, P13-1 NMR studies have proven that as soon as the elide attacks the aldehyde, the reaction directly results in the formation of oxaphosphatine. So this is the actual species that is formed in the reaction. There is no formation of betaine species in the reaction. So this is number two thing that you should be aware of. Okay. So pucker transition state, driving force of the reaction is the formation of phosphorus oxygen. Uh, double bond which is gives uh, 130 to 140 kilocalorie per mole then elimination is syn periplanar mode which give us the cis olefin as the product now let's look at how the use of different bases and solvent can change the uh, proportion of the formation of an olefin let's let's take a one example over here okay okay so let's i'm taking this particular example here Okay, so let's take this example. I have PPH3 plus. Okay, and now I am taking, let us suppose base or a solvent, which I'm going to write. Second, I'm adding this aldehyde. Okay. So this is the aldehyde. And if this aldehyde undergoes olefination, this will give Okay, so this is the product Now let us suppose if the base of the reaction is this is base. Let me just write Base and solvent. Let us just write the composition of Z2 E Okay, if I'm going to use a base like potassium tertiary butoxide in tertiary butanol in tertiary butanol right in THF the composition is 94 to 6 so it means that the major product that I get is the zizol z olefin means in the case of unstabilized elide because the elide that is formed here, okay, it does not have any stabilizing group over here. This is not stabilized by any group. That is why these elides are called unstabilized elides, okay. So unstabilized elides always gives you Z olefin. So instead of it, if I'm taking, let us suppose sodium hydride in DMF, the product combination is 94 to 6. But if I take N-butyl lithium, in THF then what we end up getting is 77 to 28 23 so why this drop in the selectivity of Z this is because these counter, counter cation like potassium and sodium these are less solvating carbocations as a result of which they favor the formation of Z olefin whereas this lithium actually lithium elides for example once this elide is formed and once we have this lithium counter cation these are more solvating these are more solubilizing as a result of which they decrease the select the comp they decrease the uh, the selectivity of z so what we get end up getting is more of e product whenever we use lithium ion so whenever you want to end up whenever you want to get exclusive formation of Z olefin, just make sure you always use bases like I mean KHMDS, okay? NHMDS. So these bases are generally preferred if you want to get the Z olefin, okay? So, second thing which is clarified whenever you want to get Z olefin, make sure you have these potassium or sodium salt. Number two is unstabilized elides. 
unstabilized elides always give you xz major okay so you always end up getting z product as the major one okay so is there any condition or is there any way via which we can get formation of e olefins or trans olefin using unstabilized elide yes this is exactly what closure did okay closure so which was called closure modification closure modification so what closure did once we form an elide let us suppose i have formed this elide in the reaction suppose i have formed this elide in a reaction and i am adding an aldehyde in the in the reaction so if this aldehyde is so this will attack and it will lead to the formation of this intermediate species let me just write it down just a second So this is the oxaphosphidin. This is what the P13 studies also, also said. So once this oxaphosphidin species is formed, so if in the medium after the uh, reaction, if, if in the reaction medium, if you add a strong base like n butyl lithium or phenyl lithium, these are strong bases. So what these strong bases do, these strong bases, these are strong bases strong base so what they do they abstract this proton okay this is what they do as a result of which what they end up forming is this open chain elide now as a formation of negative charge now this entire uh, uh, this entire transition state opens and it results in the formation of this lithiated species I'm sorry. Oh, this will remain same. This will remain same. This will remain same. This will get reversed. Okay. What happens once you this it once this carbon and abstracts the hydrogen? it forms negative charge here so negative charge the counter cation is lithium so that is why i'm just writing it as a bond okay just you can write it as simply lithium as well so what happens in order to avoid the repulsion there is a bond rotation that takes place as a result of which both r groups they end up being trans to each other now if you simply add any uh, any uh, protonated solvent here like tertiary butanol if I'm they are going to add tertiary butanol then this reaction immediately quenches and what we end up getting is this trans as the major product this is what we end up getting suppose instead of tertiary butanol if we are adding formaldehyde in the reaction SCHO which is an electrophile so since this is an electrophile this negative charge this is going to attack here and what we end up getting is this okay so what we have introduced a new substituent here which on elimination will give us this olefin as a major product so this is how we can reverse the uh, formation of exclusively e olefin rather than getting the z olefin so what we need to do is to add a strong base like n lithium or phenyl lithium which abstracts this proton and after the proton abstraction what happens in order to avoid repulsion there's a rotation which takes place and both these group end up being trans to each other and if we simply quench the reaction with a protonated solvent then what we end up getting is a trans 
product what do we end up getting is the e olefin suppose if we have any electrophile it could have been uh, instead of this you could you could have a dmf if you have dmf then you can introduce a cho group here or it could be any other electrophile so this is something that you can remember instead of uh, here i have taken an example of formaldehyde it could be something else as well so this is a very very important example so let us look at one more example from this one as well suppose if i am having this particular epoxide I think this question was also asked in one of the net exams and uh, suppose if I am doing this so this is what it was so what it does it attacks from backside it opens it leads to the formation of this intermediate Okay, this is an intermediate. Now what they have done, they have added an aldehyde here, which was pH-CHO. And you were asked what is the product of this reaction. So the product of this reaction was, of course, this. So this is how you have to do this reaction. So this is one of the questions, I think I don't remember the year, but this question was asked in one of the net exams. Okay, so now let's look at uh, what what else is there in this particular reaction okay and uh, so okay okay I forgot to tell you one thing this is yeah so here once you have the formation of this O minus okay sorry Oh, this one like like so this can also this is also called beta oxido elides these are called beta oxido elides okay just just what we saw in the previous uh, example because what we have on alpha this is beta on beta position we have this an oxido this oxido group so that is why these are also referred to as the beta oxido elides that is just to uh, make sure that you know the naming of these reaction so that if you hear these names then you should not be you know uh, should not think i have not heard this name before okay that's it about this one okay now let's look at one or two important examples now I can think of an important example here just to I mean we suppose if I'm going to if I have an aldehyde here and if I'm adding CBr4 triphenylphosphine what I end up getting is this I think most of you know the reaction if I add a strong base like n lithium two equivalents where what I end up getting is this alkyne so this reaction is the Cori Fuchs reaction just now I don't know somewhere it just came into my mind uh, since we are talking about triphenylphosphine so this is a very important reaction suppose if I want to go from one step one step how to do it there is a reagent for that actually I don't know many, uh, many of you may not be aware of it this is the name of the reagent this is called this is a phosphonate based reagent this is called Ohira Bestman reagent. Ohira Bestman reagent. Okay. And using this reagent from one step, you can go from aldehyde to alkyne. And this is a very important reagent. So what you have to take is just simply this reagent, potassium carbonate and methanol. You stir the reaction and what you end up getting is the alkyne in one product. Since this is it's a phosphonate base, that's why I decided to take in this as well. Okay. Oh, here are basement reagent. Okay. Now let's, let's look at other examples, other interesting example, but make sure you know about these two reactions because they are very important. Okay. So here we have one more example. Suppose I have this. Ketone and I have this methoc mom chloride. This is called mom chloride. If I'm going to add TPP into that, 
what I will end up getting is this triphenyl phosphine salt. If I'll add this, what I'll get end up getting is this negative PPH3 plus. So this elide will form. Suppose if this elide is here, okay, what we'll end up getting is this. This is the product we'll end up getting. And if I simply just hydrolyze it, then what I know, this is an enol ether. This is an enol ether. So what I'll end up getting is the aldehyde. This is what I'll end up getting, CHO. So this is a very, very good way of making the aldehyde. This is called mom chloride, methoxymethyl chloride, which is a protecting group for alcohols for OH. This is the protecting group for OHs. This can be easily cleaved under acidic condition. Cleaved. Cleavage under acidic condition. Okay. So this is the, these are just few of the examples. Somehow it came to my mind. Now let's talk about the Horner Wedworth Immens Olefination. Now Okay, before that, before that, let's talk about the stabilized elide. Now, so far, what we have discussed is if we have, okay, so far, what we had is this elide. Suppose if I can introduce an electron withdrawing group here, like cyano or CHO or COET, anything or COOET. If I can introduce an electron withdrawing group alpha to this carbanion, then what I can do this elect this negative charge can be stabilized by this electron withdrawing group. As a result of which what we end up getting is the formation of exclusively E olefins. Okay, and how these are stabilized this is a simple um, in chemistry that you already know. Suppose if I have this cyano group, then this can undergo this sort of a resonance as a result of which this is stabilized. Okay. And that is how you end up getting, suppose if I have now and this, let us consider this reaction. Okay. If I'm going to take a PPH3, Okay, if I'm taking a base like N-butyl lithium, okay, THF, just make sure if a carbonyl is generated here and if there is a group that can stabilize it, that's a general rule. Whenever you find if a carbonyl can be stabilized by a functional group that is present here and mostly it has to be electron withdrawing group, always trans. So that is what we end up getting. We end up getting the formation of this product. Okay, so this is the trans olefin that we get. So this is just a simple thing that you should be uh, mindful of. That this is what you should remember. Stabilize the light. There has to be an electron withdrawing group alpha to the negative charge. As simple as that. If we have a negative charge, exclusive formation of E, e would be the major product. That's what, that's what you will always end up getting. Okay. Now let's talk about the Horner Wedworth Emons condensation. Now, actually, those who have worked with the triphenyl phosphine, they will understand. There are certain limitations that triphenyl phosphine has. Okay. Number one thing, the byproduct that is, which is triphenyl phosphine oxide. This byproduct is actually very difficult to get rid of. Those who have done work in the experimental chemistry, they will understand it is absolutely, you know, pain in the ass getting rid of this triphenyl phosphine. Very, very tedious. Second thing is that if we are going towards phosphonate, I mean phosphonate uh, elides, then they are much better off because while carrying out a workup of the reactions, they can, they are water soluble, are easily removed from the system. Whereas, it's not it's very difficult to remove triphenyl phosphine or its byproduct from the reaction. Third thing is that usually phosphonate 
carbenions are much more reactive if we compare them with the phosphonium elides. So these are the three advantages that phosphonate elides have over the phosphonium. So if we talk about phosphonate elides, so this is what I mean. These phosphonate, these are phosphonates. And in previous cases, what we have been using is these phosphonium elides. Okay, so these are phos these are phosphonate, these are phosphonium elides. So these are much much better as compared to this one. So this is what was introduced by the Horner, Wedworth, Emmons. Okay, and another advantage of this reaction was you can easily tune the reaction condition to exclusively get the Z or E olefin. Now you don't have to depend upon the reaction condition. You can simply choose the appropriate phosphonate ester and get the required olefin which you desired. Okay. This is also called HWE. So what happens here? Uh, okay, 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 okay. So now how to synthesize this one? Okay, so what we have is trithyl phosphite and just to synthesize this reagent what we take is trithyl phosphite which attacks and the there's a name of the, the there's a name for the formation of this uh, reagent there's a name reaction it is called arbizov arbizov reaction arbizov reaction okay so what we end up getting is a ch2 p OET, OET, OET. This X is released. Now this X attacks here, this comes back here. So what we end up getting is this phosphonate ester. So this is the starting material. This is the starting material for the formation of the, this is the starting material for the Wittig olefination that we want to make, okay? So this, the name of this reaction is called Arbizov reaction. Okay. Now suppose if I'm adding a base, a strong base, like let us say um, NHMDS and then I'm adding an aldehyde. Suppose I'm adding this benzaldehyde. Then what will I end up getting is this exclusive formation of this, this product. Okay. Because carbonyl will generate from here and it will lead to the formation of elide here. Okay, so this is how we will end up getting is the exclusive E product. Now, the question is, why do we get E here? You don't have to go anywhere. Just at the start of the video, the way I showed the mechanism, where I've discussed where the bulky groups are going to stay. So simply look at that part of my presentation or that part of my talk, you will easily understand why are we getting trans here. It has absolutely everything to do with the stearics and thrio conformation is more favored over the erythro conformation because in the pre in the previous mechanism that we discussed in the case of the unstabilized light, the reaction proceed via the erythro conformation, which is more stabilized. Whereas in this case, it is the thrio which is stabilized. Okay. So what we end up getting is the trans product. So there are numerous examples of this particular chemistry that we can see in literature. Now let's talk about a modification in this one. So as I said, we can we can we can we can take some example. Let's say let's take one or two example. Let's take this example. Suppose yeah, I have suppose I have this. So sodium hydride DME and what I'm adding is this oxygen, oxygen, this is protected and we have this aldehyde. Very neat, very straightforward example, nothing fussy. So again, alpha hydrogen base abstracts it formation of negative charge here this negative charge will attack the aldehyde and we know since we have an electron withdrawing group here coet which is stabilizing it at the same time this negative charge is also getting stabilized by a phosphonate exclusive formation of 
जीनोलेट ओके सॉरी इनोलेट सो दिस इज द प्रोडक्ट दैट वी एंड ऑफ दैट आई ओके नथिंग टू वरी अबाउट सो अपार्ट फ्रॉम द स्ट्रॉन्ग बेसिस यू विल ऑलवेज सी द यूज ऑफ आइदर लिथियम क्लोराइड एंड बेस वेरी 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 माइल्ड बेस लाइक डायसोपाइलिथाइलामीन विच इज कॉल्ड ह्यूनिक बेस आई हैव दैट दिस मेनी टाइम्स इन माई वीडियो वो है कीप रिपीटिंग दिस इज बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू मेक श्योर यू नो द अल्टरनेटिव नेम्स ऑफ ऑल दिस बेसिस नाउ वट हैपन्स हेयर दैट दिस लिथियम क्लोराइड इट कोर्डिनेट्स विद द कार्बोनिल एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ विच इट इंक्रीजेज द एसिडिटी ऑफ दिस हाइड्रोजन सो अ वेरी माइल्ड बेस लाइक डाइसोपोपाइलेथेलामीन इट कैन एब्सट्रैक्ट इट सो अंडर दीज कंडीशन ऑल्सो दीज रिएक्शन आर वेरी वेरी वेल नोन नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द टू रिएजेंट्स दैट आर यूज इन केस इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गेट द जेड ऑलिफिन हेयर वट आर द टू रिएजेंट्स दैट आर यूज सो वेर इज इट so still and ginari what they did was still and ginari they are a res they are from a research group still and ginari what they did they found out that if you have this bis trifluoromethyl okay so if we have this trifluoro groups here then they can really alter the you know mechanistic uh, pathway of the reaction so if i am taking this and suppose if i am taking an hm ds okay 16c 186c crown ether and then if i am adding an aldehyde suppose phcho then the product that i'm end up i'll end up getting is this this so this is exclusive okay this is exclusive formation of z olefin whenever i'm using this particular reagent so this reagent name of this reagent is bis trifluoromethyl phosphonates okay this is the name of the reagent and then endo also he introduced a reagent which was nothing but he said that if you have an aromatic group here if you have an aromatic phosphonates okay these aromatic phosphonates are like this one you can have these phosphonates having a methyl group here okay so it means they add some sort of a bulk as a result of which what we end up getting is exclusively z just i'll i'll just write it thoda sa clean se i'll write it down a little clearly so this is the reagent this is the reagent okay so we can imagine there is a bulk what these reagents are doing they are adding bulk as a result of which they are changing the reaction pathway so what we end up getting is exclusively z exclusive product and they are numerous uh, reactions so uh, there are numerous variations of vitig olefination so in this video you can see the one thing that you should know is that whenever you are dealing with unstabilized elite major product is z olefin okay and suppose if in the reaction media they have added a uh, strong base like phenyl lithium that for for example first they added uh, a sodium hydride potassium uh, sodium hydride potassium tertiary butoxide and then you see after one step sequence is an addition of strong base like n butyl lithium or phenyl lithium then you can image, clearly imagine that they are talking about this closure modification and suppose we are still talking about triphenyl or phosphonium elides and if we have an electron withdrawing group next to the carbenium then it means that yes, we are talking about stabilized elide then again we know that we are end up getting will end up getting the trans product as a major one then if we move to the phosphonate esters then the story is completely different okay in the phosphonate uh, esters depending upon the condition that we uh, choose we will either end up getting the z enolate or e enolate in order to get the z enolate we need to have these we have to use these 
uh, phosphonate uh, esters in order to get the Z product. But if we want to get the E product, then we need to see if we have an electron withdrawing groups like COET or other groups. Okay. So this was about the Wittig olefination. I hope that this video is going to help you in clearing many concepts of views. Okay. Thanks a lot for watching the video.